Hello everyone and welcome to this course on modern application development. How do I specify styles if I wanted to override that, right? One way by which I could do it would directly be to add style to the tag, right? So for example, I could have something which directly says in the h1 definition, I put in what are called attributes, right? So everything which comes after this h1 over here are attributes that are interpreted as being part of the h1 definition. And in this case, it's a style attribute which specifies the color to use and how to align it, right? And if I do it with this, what I will see is that the output now looks like this. It has now got centered and the color has changed to blue, right? And in fact, if I go down and look at the styles on that h1, I'll find that yes, the color blue and text align center, both of these were styles that were given directly to the element, right? This what we have over here is the sort of default h1 style. This was something that I specified explicitly and it got applied on top of whatever else was there. So you will see that you know things like the font size which I did not specify has still been retained. The fact that I want to have a larger font for the heading, the fact that it should be bold has also been retained. Whatever I had over here is now applied on top of that, right? Which means that the color changed and the location, the centering has been changed. That is where the cascading style sheets comes into the picture. I can have one base style sheet. I can layer another one on top of that. And anything which is missing on the top one, it will go and pick it up from one of the underlying layers. I could also do this with some kind of internal CSS, right? Where essentially I would say that I have an explicit HTML tag just like head, body, h1 and so on, which defines a region which contains CSS styles. So what are these styles? The styles basically say what the body color should look like, right, the body background color and it also shows how the h1, the first level heading should be displayed, right. Now you will notice that inside this style slash style, right, this part is HTML. Everything else inside it is not really HTML. It does not follow these angle brackets to define things. It uses its own thing with these curly braces, right. It also has like some other way by which the body is defined in a certain way, h1 is defined in a certain way. It still seems to have some concept of tags and attributes and so on, right. What finally comes out as a result of this will be something like this, right. You can see over here that I specified the background color should be linen color and the h1 color should be maroon. Yes, that has happened over here. Similarly, the margin on the left hand side should be 40 pixels. It is not centered. So yes, it has left about 40 pixels on the left hand side before this blue, right. And you can see all of those things also showing up down here, okay. So in other words, by having this thing inside the head, right. So where would this style slash style go? It would go inside the head tag. Now, one good thing about having this kind of styling is it means that all h1 tags that are present in the document are now going to have their style changed at one shot. In the previous approach, I would have to go and put these attributes into each and every h1 tag. If I make a change somewhere, I have to go and manually change it everywhere. By doing this, I have changed all of them at one shot, okay. Now, the obvious next step after this is to say, okay, you know, why have this style slash style inside the HTML document? Why not make it an external file, right? And the reason behind that is by having it as one external file, I have now opened up the possibility of reuse. I now have a CSS file which is dedicated just to how pages should look and they can be loaded into several different pages and displayed. So all of those pages get displayed the same way. This also sort of helps with regard to things like caching of files, right? The first time I hit that CSS file, I load it. But then for the next page, I do not need to load it again. I know that I already have it with me. Okay. So now with all of this, we, there is one further aspect of styling that is increasingly important, right? Well, it is very important nowadays and it is not, you know, it is only going to stay as important or become more important as time goes on, which is the fact that a large number of users are actually 
viewing web pages on mobiles and tablets that have smaller screens than the desktops that we are used to. In general, there are many different form factors that are in use today. The question then comes, okay, how does a page display across different form factors and will it respond to changes? In other words, let's say I take a phone and you know I tilt it around into landscape mode. Does the page automatically restructure itself? Does it try to show me more information? Or does it just you know take exactly the same information I had, but just rotated by 90 degrees so it is now visible? Right? And a lot of this can be controlled through CSS styling. The HTML remains completely unchanged. The CSS styling, on the other hand, can decide how the various parts of the page get displayed and shown to you. Now, this is an example, right? I mean, the I have just taken a snapshot of the web page of the Department of Electrical Engineering at IIT Madras. This was taken on a desktop computer, right? And as you can see, there's you know it's a fairly informative web page, right? And nice simple colors, right? Not too many dramatic colors all over the place. It just has some simple colors. This part over here very clearly shows that it's the heading, right? You have some part which is just the introduction of the department, and then you have a news section out here and something about events, right? So there's some nice structure to this page, right? It has things that are laid out uh, appropriately. There are also some navigation tabs over here, news opportunities, and so on, right? In other words, structurally, this makes a lot of sense. You look at this page, you at one glance, get a picture of where you might want to go and look for further information. Okay, so far so good. The point is, this is on a fairly large screen. What happens if I was watching it, and you know, or rather seeing this page on a smaller screen, right? Let's say an iPad in portrait mode. Now it starts to look a bit more tricky, right? Because now I find that, no, how did I get all of these pictures? I basically took a standard browser, went into developer mode, and asked it to show me what this would look like on an iPad. Right? And this is what it shows me. It's still not too bad. The problem is that clearly the iPad has a smaller screen, right? And what it has tried to do is just basically adjust a lot of what it has onto that smaller screen. It hasn't really fundamentally changed the way the page is displayed in any way, right? So you still have, you know, this block on the right over here, which means that there's like these huge chunks of white space that are not being used. That was fine on the original you know, desktop because, well, the desktop has enough space. The iPad doesn't. Maybe I could have used this in order to make the fonts a little bit bigger. Another layout, right, which is by sort of changing it slightly for the iPad is, which happens automatically. I did not really change anything. I just sort of changed what kind of browser I'm looking at. Now, notice that this entire panel that I had on top, has got converted into a different sort of header, right? Where I can basically choose which page I want to go to or which category I want to go to, okay? The same way, the news, which was sort of side by side over here, has now been replaced one after the other, right? So I have these news items one after the other. The upcoming events are there somewhere else, but probably you know much lower down in the page. Maybe that could have been rearranged so that it comes on top. But the point is that this is a lot more readable. Basically, I can already see this, you know, the font sizes that I have over here, and it looks a lot better. Okay. So you can see that without changing anything, I essentially was able to switch from here to here, basically because my screen size changed. Something triggered a change in which CSS was being used in order to display it. And this one actually looks a lot smaller on a constrained screen. Now, having said that, can I go one step further? What happens if I go down to you know something really small like a phone? Okay. Now, on a phone, you know, even though I've shown it large over here, what I actually have is you know the width is just probably three or four inches, whereas over here it would be something like seven or eight inches at least, right? Within those three or four inches, if I tried to take all of this and you know what I have on the left hand uh, left hand side and squeeze it down, it would still look very small. Instead, it sort of adapts that, right? So even something which this text which was sort of flowing across two lines over here now flows across multiple lines over here. The title and so on are also put into multiple lines without sort of sacrificing on the font size. Okay. Now of course 
it does look like you know a lot of information has gone over here but it's very easy to now scroll through this and pick out information or for that matter to use the buttons right on top and pick the parts that you find most useful so this is basically what responsive design is all about how was it enabled because of the fact that we were able to separate out the html the content from the styling which was handled by css and various sort of combinations of css are what we use in order to basically say okay look i can now just adapt to the size of the screen that i'm looking at right and it will you know uh, change the way it is displayed in such a way that it still looks good how do you decide that it looks good somebody has sat and sort of tried to tweak it so that you know the uh, template that you are using adapts nicely to the new screen size and still looks readable on it okay it's not that automatically css knows how to do it but one person if they have done it once that can now be used repeatedly by lots of other people now this whole idea of reuse right the fact that css components can be reused by different people in order to get similar functionality or similar styling without much effort has led to a number of different frameworks for css right and one of the most commonly used ones is something called bootstrap right bootstrap by itself is not really a programming language or a framework as such it is more a framework specifically for css for style sheets right it originated from twitter but is widely used all over the place now it is open source and the nice thing about it is it defines very sort of aesthetic aesthetically pleasing uh, combinations of colors and uh, you know layouts for things like buttons tabs navigation the you know three line menu bar that you are probably uh, familiar with right and it is also designed right from the get go to be mobile first right highly responsive layouts uh, twitter is sort of most popular on mobile phones therefore they it made sense for them to focus on that but it also does well on larger screens okay so bootstrap is an example that uh, can be used right but keep in mind that this is just one of several things the whole idea over here is that the style sheets have made it possible to reuse material this is one example of that being done now having come through all of this and you know the document object model the apis the styling and all of that one thing that i have not touched upon at all is javascript what is the role of javascript what is javascript and what is its role in the web okay it's an interpreted language that was basically brought into the browser in some ways it was brought in such that you know it was possible to run some kinds of basic non trivial functionality right create some slightly more complex behaviors inside the browser that are not possible using html and css right now why is this necessary because although you may you know come across the terms html programming and css programming neither html nor css is a programming language you cannot really use it to control the behavior of a computer right if you give html there is something inside the computer which is already a program which interprets how to display it if you give css that can will again modify it but you are not by writing the html pro, uh, code right you are not directly modifying the behavior of the computer now this is a slightly tricky statement the reason being that you know there are some specific set of conditions under which css can be shown to be what is called turing complete right meaning that it can basically execute anything that any other computer can do you can write a program in other words in css okay but it requires some additional functionality such as user input and so on the point is it is not meant as a programming language it is not meant to you know run for loops and uh, take user input and do a bunch of other things just like that it is meant for styling javascript on the other hand from the get go is meant for programming right it is meant to basically manipulate the dom manipulate the document object model either directly based on user input or you know without having any user interaction but right from the beginning it basically says okay once a javascript starts executing it is capable of modifying what is being shown on the screen right 
the original thing why it came up was fairly simple task for example when let's say i'm entering an email address i can do the validation is this a valid email address right there in the browser before even going to the server right so certain kinds of things can be done automatically in the javascript which sort of make the interaction between the user and the server a little bit more fluid right? nowadays of course javascript has got to the point where the entire page could be dynamically generated using javascript right that has both good and bad aspects which you know at some point hopefully we will uh, get into those but the main thing is that as far as this uh, app development uh, course is concerned this is javascript is not going to be the primary aspect of what we are looking at it is something which is useful immensely useful but we want to focus more on the basics the core presentation layer and how do we create the functionality that we want <coughs> from the server so to summarize this whole discussion has been about the presentation right in other words the part that interacts with the user that interfaces with the user and the main core idea that we wanted to bring out over here is this business of separating content from style there is markup which is typically done using html for web pages versus styling which in our case is handled using css cascading style sheets okay and that logical separation between the two is something that is very important to understand and keep clearly in mind because it has a direct impact on the design of applications how they look how they can be styled how they can be developed or adapted moving forward 